In this series of videos you will see how to create light and strong body parts of complex shape, from a photograph or sketch to a finished metal-coated composite part. In this video we will analyze in detail how to prepare an electrolyte, prepare a galvanic bath, a knot plates and cover a part with copper. Likes and comments below, so we begin. In the last video we prepared the part for electroplating and figure out how to do it without hard to reach copper varnish. Now we need to prepare everything for electroplating. Capacity of the bath is better to choose based on consideration the more the better. But also do not forget that the larger the capacity, the more electrolyte will need to be prepared. The further from the part the copper anode plates are located, the more evenly the copper will grow. Do not allow such an arrangement when any area of the surface to be coated is several times closer to the anode than the other areas. Ideally, arrange the anode plates so that all areas of the covered surface are at an equal distance from them. All these nuances are especially important given the still high resistance of graphite surface, which also will lower it several times due to tricks with varnish and powder, certainly not as low as copper conductive paint. With an electrical conductive layer of copper paint, these nuances are not so critical since copper will grow faster and more evenly with almost any arrangement of these anode plates. Anode plates can be any copper parts with a total area comparable to the area of the surface we need to cover. It is more convenient to use flat copper bars which are used for building grounding. But since all this metal is needed only to dissolve it and compensate for the loss of copper ions from the electrolyte, it can be copper in any form, whether it be copper tubes or cuttings of high voltage wires. In such a case, it is better to pack copper with stainless steel mesh and pack with a non-woven fabric filter. Then the copper parts will be completely consumed and will not clog the bath. The anode material must be clean so as not to clog the electrolyte and make fasteners from copper wire on which the plates will be suspended in the bath. Then we pack all the plates in non-woven fabric filters or coffee filters so that the dissolving copper doesn't create any mess. To make the coating process even faster and more uniform, in the bath, in addition to the pot and the anode plates, you can place a heater and a small water pump from the aquarium. The heater will warm the water and the pump will constantly mix it. After installing all the details, we can estimate how much electrolyte we need. There are ready-made electrolytes for copper plating on sale, but it can be easily prepared from easy-to-find means and then it will come out cheaper. Here is an electrolyte recipe for a smooth plating, with which I have been working for the last two years and it gives a good quality of coverage. Here is a method for preparing such an electrolyte per 1 liter of solution. We heat up half a liter of distilled water and add 200 grams of copper sulfate to it. After a long stirring, complete the solution of the granules and when the solution cools down a little, pour in 140 grams of battery acid. And when we measure out 700 of a gram of theocarbamide and 700 of gram of simple salt, which works as a brightener, and pour them into the solution. After that, Add distilled water to the mark of 1 liter and our electrolyte is ready. Filter it through paper coffee filters and pour it in 5 liter bottles in which it can be stored for years. Before starting the reaction it is better to heat the electrolyte with an aquarium heater in a water bath or just in a saucepan up to 30-40 degrees centigrade. At this temperature tightening with copper will be faster and, as you can see, most of our preparation efforts are aimed at this. After making sure that all the parts are securely fixed in the bath and will not change their position, we connect the negative to the part, positive to the anode plates, and pour warm electrolyte so that the part is completely covered and there was still a couple of centimeters of solution up to very top. Now everything is ready to plating. We apply current in the calculation of 1 to 2 amp per square decimeter. Considering that we model the detail in a blender or any other 3D modeling program, the area of the detail can be clarified right there. Just do not forget that this is the area of the entire part and we are only covering one side, so do not overdo with the current. Now all that remains is to observe the reaction. 
The quality of the plating will depend on how well all the previous preparation have been done. If everything is in order, then even at a current of 1 amp per square decimeter, such a pot with a rather impressive area and the still terrible large surface resistance of the graphite layer will be covered with a layer of copper in just 2 hours. For comparison, a ping pong ball coated with graphite varnish without graphite powder, under the same condition, it is tightening in 5 hours. I always put lamps against the walls of the bath, but even so, due to sediment and anode plates, it is not always possible to monitor the tightening without removing the pot from the bath. Therefore, every 30 minutes I take the pot out of the bath for a couple of seconds to evaluate the tightening speed. Do not pull out the pot for more than a few seconds until the reaction is complete. The copper layer instantly oxidizes in air and this creates whitish inclusions inside the copper. When the whole pot or 90% of the area has already been covered with a reddish matte layer of copper, raise the current to 2 amp per square decimeter and observe how the layer begins to thicken, change texture and become shiny. When growing up a layer as well as when tightening, I recommend checking the pot every 30 minutes and taking out of the solution for a few seconds to inspect. You can do this even more often, especially if this are your first experience and you need to understand how long it takes to cover and grow thickness. In the first experiments, it is better to overexpose the pot a little than underexposing and tearing off a too thin layer of copper when grinding. This pot with an area of 3 square decimeter was tightening for only 2 hours at a current of 1 amp per square decimeter. And then it gained the desired thickness for another 3 hours at a current of 2 amps per square decimeter. Immediately after the galvanic bath, wash the pot in soapy water. Contact wires as well as mounting rod can be removed so they do not interfere with washing all surfaces well. Weigh the pot to estimate the mass of the grown copper and knowing the area to estimate how thick the copper layer turned out. Again, when using copper conductive varnish, we would get a perfect mirror finish right after the electroplating bath, but with graphite varnish and powder, this doesn't work. In any case, this quality of the copper layer is the best which I was able to get with graphite on such large pots. With an eccentric machine and sanding disc with grit of 200 to 400, remove minor copper growth which appear only if we slightly overexpose the pot when building up the layer. Then, using a sanding stone and 400 grit sandpaper, align the surface of the pot manually. When grinding, try to take into account the overall geometry of the pot and guide the stone along large areas without rounding the desired edges. Note that close-end idea worked and the copper layer securely packed our plastic composite layer pot into a protective metal case. Further processing depends on your preferences. If you want the surface to be perfectly smooth and glossy like a mirror after all works, then we'll level the surface dry with 400 sandpaper and get rid of the marks with the wet sanding with sandpapers 800, 1000 and 2000. After that, we polish the pot with a soft cloth and polishing paste. Such a surface is more resistant to minor scratches as it is harder for foreign objects to cling to the mirror surface. However, when comparing a mirrored surface with a roughly polished pot, you will notice that due to glare and reflections, the shape of a pot with mirror surface is harder to see. This is exactly the reason why in the suits of Iron Man and Mandalorian, John Favreau favored detail with pronounced risks from roof machine sanding on the surface and here I fully agree with the master. To give the best protective properties and protection against oxidation, a layer of copper is usually plated with a layer of nickel and then chromium. But you must admit that even without a nickel and chrome, our pot looks impressive. And it's not just decorative. The main thing is the combination of weight, strength, hardness of such a material and the ease of technology for manufacturing parts in this way. If this video was helpful to you, click the like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel not to miss the next video in which we cover the part with a layer of nickel which will give it even more perfect properties. Good luck with your own projects and see you soon!